just a couple of minutes just to quickly tell you how really to assemble a crucible holder and a crucible to stop the crucible falling out when you go and pour your metal into your mold or ingot mold. My name's Andrew Berry and welcome to At The Bench. I've heard a few people having a few problems with their crucible holders. Now we sell these in our store. This is, um, I'd say this is the deluxe version. It is a very, very good one. And we've been using these types of holders for many, many years, as you can see, but this one here, it's rusty, but it's looking really good still after all these years, and it still does the job. Now, when you buy your crucible holder, it comes as is here, a crucible holder, okay? It has a wooden handle, has a wing nut that allows this little area to slide up and down. It's got these two forks that come over at a slight angle. But it also comes with this little contraption as well. Okay, now what does this little contraption do? Um, sometimes when we pack them, it's not convenient to leave them attached to the crucible holder, so we put them to one side, purely to save on, on carriage. Now, when it comes to putting the ingot mold, ingot mold, the crucible into the crucible holder, there is a chance that when you do tip up the crucible holder, that the crucible falls out due to the weight of the metal. Now that is where this little device comes in handy. Now I've just noticed that on my old crucible holder, this little area here that slides up and down, we've got this angled at this end and this is straight, but this is a brand new one here and it looks like it may be being put on back to front, but it really doesn't matter too much. If you are unsure, you can't undo the bolt here and reverse this because it's fastened underneath. So perhaps what I would be inclined to do is to tighten up the nut, get yourself a pair of pliers, okay, and just turn that that way so we can get the pliers, put your pliers here and push that little area forwards a bit just to give it a bit of, not verticalness, but an incline, sort of going forward as we've got there. And that'll become apparent now when I put all this together. So here is a typical uh, crucible. We haven't prepared this at all, but the idea is you've got these ends that are at an angle facing in this way. And now either this little section here is pointing upright or pointing towards the little claws here. Now the crucible goes in the end. Let's slacken that off a little bit. Crucible goes in the end. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold this in my right hand and I'm going to pour in this direction, so the lip is down here. Now, what you need to do is, is not just simply tighten that up, because the crucible, in fact, is actually quite tight, but is usually still loose. So what I would be inclined to do is get your thumb and keep pushing this little slider up. So I'm forcing, see how with the pressure on my thumb, forcing it up against the crucible, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, turn the wing nut. That is usually sufficient to hold that crucible in place because these little claws here are coming towards the crucible and I've also made this upright and it still can be upright if you don't fancy bending it but that is pointing towards the crucible. So it's being wedged, the crucible is being wedged into place. Now I think a few may have had this little section pointing upright okay so it doesn't really grip the crucible that tightly. Now this is where this little device comes into place. You've got two holes down here, all right, and this is sort of quite springy, and you've got this little claw that's on the end. Now what I would be inclined to do, if you're unsure about how safe that crucible is on the end, use this, and perhaps always use this, just to be on the safe side. So the idea is you put this into the hole, and this is a two inch crucible, so we're gonna use the hole nearest the handle. Put that in, and the further you put it down, the greater the, the tension is gonna be on this. Okay, so bring it right towards the end. There's not an awful lot of tension by here. Push it all the way, or half the way down, and that's gonna give you a nice lot of tension. The idea is you will then put that over the edge of your crucible, just like that there. You may want, want it that way or have it just turned around this way. So there's just one of those teeth coming down into place. Now the idea with this is now, because of the spring that is incorporated on here, this is pushing the crucible 
into the frame. Okay, so when you come to tip it, the crucible is not going to fall forward because it is held with the spring. Perhaps you may want to bring that down onto the end here and put that further down onto the end down here. Now the problem that you've got, you've got to be careful, is that when you're melting your metal, your metal doesn't go on this steel part here and get stuck. So always, always take care not to swoosh your metal around that crucible too much because you don't want your metal to go onto this steel part and perhaps have it so only one little claw is just coming over to hold that into place. And that is how I would simply operate it. Now, as you perhaps are only doing silver and you're gonna be sprinkling flux onto this whole area here, you may find as this one is that the flux sort of gets coated all over the crucible and all over this slided part here and also onto these little claws coming over the edge there, it'll hold onto the crucible. So the crucible won't be inclined to move back and forth. You may see some pictures of the crucible upside down, like that, and this coming on the bottom. That may be the case, but my argument now is that the, you've got to try and heat your metal inside this area here. And the whole area here is gonna get hot and this is gonna be in direct contact with the flame and it's gonna heat up the handle really, I think a little bit too much. And if you do swish your metal around or even pour the metal out, there's a chance that the metal may attach itself onto the steel area by here. So personally, I've never done it that way, but you do see some photographs showing that particular setup as we've got it. So if you're unsure, And it's always better to be sure is to keep this pushed forward. As I said, if this is pointing upwards, bend it forward slightly, and that will really help hold on to the crucible. Push with your thumb, push it forward. Whilst you're pushing forward, turn the wing nut, and for me, that holds that nice into position. If you're unsure, simply push this into the first hole, hold it there, and just bring that up and it's only a slight little bit of pressure. You don't want to put too much pressure that it forces the crucible up the opposite way. So holding that in place will simply make sure that that crucible stays put when you come to melt down. There we go. That is how to assemble your crucible holder and to ensure your crucible doesn't fall out when you're melting down. My name is Andrew Berry for At The Bench. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time.